Hello everyone and this is my review for WWE Monday Night Raw on December 5th, 2016 and well, what can you say about this show? This was an interesting show where uh, you had a lot of stuff going around the whole Rusev, Lana, Enzo and Cass storyline and also some a uh, really good setup for what will hopefully be the final match between Charlotte and Sasha Banks. Though, loving the feud, but it, you're getting a lot of matches with it now. And they might want to put this one on the back burner for a little bit of time with what they're going to be doing. But let's go through the entire show here. Um, they started off the show with Seth Rollins coming out to cut a promo. Yeah, lo and behold, they're cutting a promo right at the beginning of the show again. Jeez, they have to do that for every single show now. Uh, it's always a fresh, uh, fresh take whenever they... Uh, start to show off with a match <laughs> so but he comes out there to cut a promo basically starting off the night um and says who he really wants in the end and ties it in there together a little bit but finally a mention of i don't know what triple h did months ago to him lo and behold they actually mentioned triple h on the show of course he doesn't come out uh, of course he doesn't come out in the end uh so he what he wanted to do was to get to kevin owen like his Thinking of his thinking is like the best way to get the Triple H is by getting rid of his new golden goose, which is Kevin Owens, by uh, winning the Universal Title. But now he has to focus on Jericho and get rid of him before he can go to Owens, even though Owens and Jericho are still butting heads together. Uh, and this plays off throughout the entire night to go along with it. Uh, Kevin Owens comes out. He says he's gotten a whole bunch of gifts for Jericho uh, in the terms of matches. So one, he got him a U.S. title match that night. Then two, he got him to have a match with Seth uh, Jericho versus Seth Rollins at Roadblock. So you get one of the first matches that, uh, announced for another one of the matches for Roadblock announced. And he also got a match with Seth Rollins against another man and it ended up being the big show actually uh, this was not bad this was not bad in the end and big show looked like he trimmed down a lot they said like he trimmed down to 395 and he you could definitely tell like uh it didn't feel like he had a gut or anything in that sense like it looked like he had trimmed way down in the terms of everything it looked really good M not to mention the magnificent beard, like the full magnificent beard he had, was gr uh, just looked great. So the match with Seth Rollins and uh, Big Show was okay. It was your typical standard fare, like Big Show trying to, um, you know, Big Show being the giant, smaller guy trying to knock him down. Uh, where you get a couple spots with that in the end. Uh, in the end, it was an all right match. The match ends, and you see this throughout the entire match. And this was actually good storytelling. Like, Big Show's supposed to play the heel, but Kevin Owens is out there barking orders at him at all, at all times. And, you know, Big Show, he doesn't like people barking orders at him, apparently. Uh, and who would, really? Uh, so, you see throughout the match that, like, Big Show was kind of giving a glare at Kevin Owens every time he was saying something. And this leads to the end of the match where uh, Kevin Owens is up on the ring apron and he's like barking at Big Show, like just giving him orders, everything in that sense, throwing them, throwing things at him, uh, throwing words at him to try to get rid of Seth Rollins. And this leads to Big Show choke slamming Kevin Owens into the ring and just walking away. Just walks away from the match. Though he does that whole aspect of, here you go, Seth. There you go. Have fun. Seth uh, at the end just kind of shrugs his shoulders like, okay, yeah, I'll take that. And pedigree's uh, KO. Um, not a bad segment in the end. It came off rather good, uh, which is very rare to say sometimes, uh, or very rare to say recently with Big Show, not in the terms of uh, throughout his entire career in that sense. But uh, I thought it came off as rather good, though. It plays off an aspect that Big Show came back. He was a heel. So there's, the fl there's a flip on that one. I think he was... He might have been face, or he might have been heel when he left last time. I forget what it was uh, at this point. It's been a while since he's been back. But he came back heel and immediately went face. Another turn. Yeah. Big Show and Kane. The masters of turning face and heel whenever they really feel like it. Uh, uh, at any given time. So, um, up next, you had Jack Gallagher going up against Arya Davari. And what was a much shorter match, and that what I would say also didn't fully allow Jack Gallagher to show everything that he would typically do 
on the um, what he had done on 205 Live from the week before. Uh, 205 Live, by the way, I have to go off and say, I watched the first episode of it, and I thoroughly enjoyed it. Now, they are doing something a little bit more again. You saw this at the beginning with the Cruiserweights, but you've seen this again with 205 Live, and then you saw it again here on Raw, where they would play those video packages telling you more about these guys. You know, maybe to try to get you to care about them in any way, shape, or form, whether you would care that they're a face or, you know, you want to get behind their story or the fact that, that you might not like the guy or something in that sense. You saw this a little bit more during 205 Live. You saw some for Jack Gallagher, Rich Swan. Uh, you saw something for Brian Kendrick as well and the Bollywood Boys. Um, and 205 Live came off as a really good show uh, in the end. And... Uh, can't say too much too much more about that. Was, I just did. I thoroughly enjoyed that variation of the cruiser rights more than I do on Monday Night Raw. Uh, just because the aspect seems like they are allowed to do a little bit more of what they did during the Cruiserweight Classic over here versus what they did on Raw. Uh, this match with Jack Gallagher and uh, Ari Bari was nothing like the one that they had on Two Hundred Five Live. Um, mainly because they did not allow Jack Gallagher to go ahead and do more of the stuff that he was doing. Like he was kind of a flashy showman about in the terms of not in the terms of flipping around or anything in that sense, but in the terms of uh, like tying you up in wrestling moves and everything in that in that sense. Like he did a flashier version of a normal wrestling move. Uh, to make it look a little bit more exciting and everything in that sense. I, I kind of, and I actually did like that stuff there. They didn't really uh, do that here. Jack Gallagher does win. Uh, does the whole aspect of being a gentleman at the end of the match. Wants to shake uh, Ari Davari's hand. Uh, Davari now at least sets up for him being a full-on heel because he just attacks Jack Gallagher at the end of the match, attacking his knee and essentially trying to take him out at that point. Uh, you do have some segments... Throughout the entire night, uh, leading to uh, the Jericho and Roman Reigns match, uh, Jericho and Roman Reigns are—you uh, had a segment backstage where Jericho and Kevin Owens is Jericho's just coming into the ring or coming into the arena, and it's like, uh, "Did you see what just happened?" Like Kevin Owens was just like tr trying to be buddy buddy with him and everything in that sense throughout the entire time, and he basically like shrugs off Kevin Owens. Like, no, I didn't see anything. No, I didn't know about that. And no, we're not good. And everything in that sense. It, it was a pretty good segment. Uh, continues to build the tension between the two of them. Uh, you also had a, a spot with Kevin Owens, or not Kevin Owens, but Roman Reigns and Jericho where, oh, oh no, I keep saying Owens, but uh, Roman kind of says, you know, you could just be doing what you normally been doing, which is doing Kevin Owens dirty work and everything in that sense. So uh, in the end, uh, nothing too special about about that segment. You did have one more segment right before the match where you had Kevin Owens and Jericho, like Jericho or Kevin Owens said everything that he was going through, the you know having the aspect of everything, even though even though everything that had happened to him that night, which was uh, the pedigree, the choke slam, uh, having to have a match with Sami Zayn right after uh, right afterwards to go along with it, uh, which was a good match by the way. Uh, Kevin Owens goes over in what was a good match. Um, and it does give Kevin Owens a little bit of a boost on the aspect of you know winning a match without anyone's help in any way, shape, or form. So it does kind of boost him a little bit in that sense to go along with it. Uh, really good match between them. But it's like even though all three of those things happened, he was going to stay there and help Chris Jericho win the United States title. Jericho just stops and is like, no. Going out there, winning it myself. And then they go out there for the match between Roman Reigns and Chris Jericho. Um, really good match between the two of them. I At least I thought it was a really good match. And, you know, they put, and they play off the aspect that, you know, no one's out there or anything like that. And then Kevin Owens, like, towards the end of the match, comes out there, super kicks, um, uh, super kicks Roman, 
and then the co-breaker uh, gets hit for a tease finish and this is where the tension continues building it's like you know, you, you're expecting it to be like oh Jericho was just in on it the whole time no he wasn't in on it he was like telling and it distracts Jericho on the aspect that Kevin Owens is out there they start arguing which eventually leads to him getting speared and Roman Reigns getting the victory so they're continually building this tension between Kevin Owens and, and not Roman Reigns but Kevin Owens and Chris Jericho while he also has this thing with Roman Reigns to go along with it. And it's playing off rather well. Uh, I'm not going to lie to you. It's playing off rather well here. And we'll see where everything ends up going with it. If they're going to play it off as like a little tease. Or they're going to go for the full split of Kevin Owens and Chris Jericho here down the line. Uh, Rich and uh, up next to really talk about was Rich Swan versus TJ Perkins. Uh, they announced that Brian Kendrick was going to get his... Uh, rematch for the Cruiserweight title at 205 Live. Uh, this match between TJ Perkins and Rich Swan was a pretty good match. There was a real slow point, like right in the middle of the match. It was really weird. Uh, like you had this action, you had like them kind of doing more fast paced action, uh, strikes and kicks and everything in that sense. And then all of a sudden they kind of go into rest holds before picking up the action to go off for the, for the finish. Um, Interesting match. Uh, I feel like they missed the flow of the match a little bit in, in there in the middle, but uh, overall not a bad match in the end to go along with it. Um, so let's see here. There, there's other stuff to go through here. Uh, before I get into the Enzo stuff, there was one other, oh, two other matches to really talk about. Um, one, not so much. Uh, you have Bailey going up against Alicia Fox. This got set up because like Bailey's apparently going out, uh, going backstage and handing out Bailey Bears. Uh, to everybody, uh, well, everybody in general, she gives one to Cedric Alexander, which makes Alicia Fox mad because she's going after Cedric and everything in that sense. So she makes it feel like Bailey's going after, uh, going after her guy that she wants. Um, the match itself was a rather quick match, um, but this is one of those matches that was, it, it was fine that it was quick, only in the sense of. It looked like the two of them were going out there and having a fight. Like, the ma the hits themselves looked stiff. It looked like it was a hard-hitting match. Uh, even though it was a rather quick match, you could tell that it was, like, a back-and-forth between the two. And they were, tr uh, and, like, Alicia Fox was really trying to go after Bailey in some way, shape, or form. So, it came off as okay in the end, but still a rather quick match. Uh, and that wasn't the only quick match of the night because they had Titus O'Neil up against Mark Henry. And I love this aspect of the Titus brand, like trying to promote everything as something different. He was calling this like the tussle in Texas and everything. Like they make the, made the old school wrestling, um, old school wrestling posters for it and everything, or like an old school wrestling poster graphic for it and everything. And then they go out there and Mark Henry wins in one move. Yep, <laughs> that's how. That's definitely how you have to go through it. Because I like this aspect. I don't know why I like this aspect of it in, in any way, but maybe it's because it's playing off as a heel character. But this, like everything that Titus tries to brand, it backfires on him. Now I don't know if they're going to continue on with this whole press conference thing, which was also great stuff. Like he would do press conferences after each of the matches they had been having, like after the losses and everything, and it was. It's pretty good stuff. Titus O'Neil's pretty good. Uh, I'm kind of hoping that he's al allowed to get away from this whole aspect of getting squashed or anything and is allowed to build to uh, something down the road. Uh, so we'll see where everything goes with that. Um, also, you had Gallows and Anderson going up against uh, Cesaro and Sheamus for the number one contendership for tag team titles. New Day's out there. Obviously, this leads into an aspect that... Uh, all the guys get knocked into the New Day. This causes the New Day to attack them and cause a no contest. So there was no number one contender. So what do you do? You make a triple threat match. Triple threat match is made for the next week uh, because they're trying to play the storyline like they, like they have to defend these titles. They have to defend the tag team titles almost on a weekly basis before breaking the record. But they've been doing it in more dubious means. They even cut a backstage promo that was more old New Day-esque. Where they were kind of just going off on the interviewer and everything in that sense. Where 
it, it makes it feel like that um, the tension of trying to break these records, or like the the pressure of trying to break this record from demolition, is kind of turning New Day heel again. Instead of where they like they started off heel, well they started off heel because no one in it, like initially they didn't necessarily like them, so they played off as heels for a while, and then eventually went to faces. And it looks like they're going full circle back into heels again uh, with how this is going. Like, uh, it'll be interesting to see how they play it off next week. And if they either have them lose the match or if they have them win the match but win again by dubious means in some way, shape, or form and try to turn them full on heel to go up against either Cesaro or Sheamus or whatever they're going to be doing with the New Day after uh, this particular thing with the whole record of demolition is done. Um, let's see here. Other things to go go off of. Well, after the uh, one other thing, uh, after what, what feels like almost a year, but it's only been like a couple months or something like that, of promos for Emma coming back as Emma Lena. Now she's going to debut next week. So we're going to see how they're going to play off of everything and how they're going to play Emma, uh, the whole thing with Emma and em, or the Emma Lena now off and uh, see where they go with that. Uh, you'll get to see whether she's heel or face. You almost feel like she's going to be a heel, but we'll see where they go with everything um, with that side. So this is going to bring me to probably the two other sto main stories of the night. Uh, they started, this one started kind of around the f end of the first hour, maybe into the second hour. I forget what, forget the time frame in general, but you had Enzo and Cass talking backstage. They see Rusev and Lana arguing. Enzo tries to get involved. Uh, and this is where you kind of get to the point of like, okay, this is kind of a ploy, so let's just see how this goes. But you obviously tr see Trap right off the bat. So Lana throws her wedding ring at Rusev and set, basically says they're through and everything like that. And Enzo, they kind of start flirting a little bit. This sets up for like a hotel room type segment later in the show. You have like, you have a big cast also throughout there trying to warn Enzo is like she's bad news you don't want to go go off of this eventually like a a, a selfie gets sent to uh, Enzo and he starts running off and he runs off this leads to a stair of the, another stare down with like Cass and Rusev where Rusev wants to set up a match between the two of them that night it's like and of course Cass is like okay and everything in that sense uh, you even get an aspect of a segment where Ric Flair comes in and as um Enzo's waiting for an Uber uh, to go along with it. And that was a good exchange. The exchange between Enzo and Ric Flair was great. Kind of made the entire segment. Uh, th or made the entire aspect of the, uh, of the whole thing pretty good. But it led to what you kind of thought it would lead to. So uh, Big Cass goes out there for his match, which was supposed to be with Rusev. But Rusev's music plays. He doesn't show up. Now, here's the good thing. It doesn't just play off in the aspect of, oh, he didn't show up. Big Cass, like, kind of realizes while he's in the ring, what's going on. So immediately tries to call, like, get a phone and call Enzo out there. So you, they cut to camera. Enzo ignores the phone call. And he even plays it off. In, in the aspect of this segment, he even plays it off like this isn't a good idea. This isn't a good idea, and tries to get out of it the entire time. But Lana keeps goading him in there, making Enzo basically look like a fool throughout the entire time, uh, which is what she says in the end. Believe it or not, uh, she, so Enzo gets beaten down by Rusev inside the hotel room, gets dragged off, and you know the one crazy touch about it that I actually kind of liked was the aspect that before they close the door, Lana puts the do not disturb sign on the door, implying what's going to happen next. Uh, implying what's going to happen between her and Rusev next. So, um, overall, not bad segments. It was well executed, but you knew where this was going. It was going to lead to Rusev beating down Enzo, and this is probably going to lead into more with... Rusev and Big Cass here in the very near future. I mean, like I said, it was well executed, but come on, when you do these segments, you almost always know where these are going to go. And it, it led exactly where you thought it was going to go in, in that sense. So, 
uh, like good on the execution of it, but uh, not so much on the originality of it uh, to go along with it. So we'll see how this uh, Rusev big cast thing plays out as well, because that's what you, you have to assume that's what they're going for is something with Rusev and big cast in the end. He's getting Enzo to get the cast as well, or something in that sense for what he had done weeks ago. And I mean, uh, for what had happened weeks ago with you know Enzo showing up naked in front of his wife, and that's how this entire storyline started off. By the way, people is that that segment uh, to go along with it. So yeah. Rusev, you know, standing up for the honor of his wife. He's the bad guy. Duh, like I said, they did play it off as Enzo. Like, like I said, throughout the entire thing, they did play it off as Enzo trying to get out of the situation, too. Uh, without, you know, being there. But he decided to still show up. So that's where they go with it. Uh, we'll see where they go with that from here on in. Uh, this leads into what was probably the main aspect of the night though only got two segments um you had an interview with Sasha Banks saying uh saying she's going to challenge Charlotte one more time but what she's going to challenge her to is not just a normal match she's going to challenge her to the Iron Man match the 30 minute Iron Man match or Iron Woman match in this case because of the because it is the women in uh, in that case but uh it's a return of the Iron Man match that you all, well, not a full return because it was Sasha and Bailey down in NXT. So now you're going to get that match here on the main Raw. You're going to get the Iron Man match with the women's side on the main roster now. So we'll see how that plays off at Roblox. But again, like I, like I said, they need to try to end this thing with Sasha and Charlotte for a little while. Like put it to a side so they can come back to it later uh, at some point in time down the road we'll see where they go with it uh, but this leads into the final aspect of the night which also ended the show which was Charlotte wanting to come out and apologize to her father for what she had done back in May and speaking of which Sasha good job with continuity good job with continuity in there she said even though it's like she wanted to dedicate her win last week to Ric Flair more out of respect, even though Ric Flair had cost her the title at WrestleMania. Continuity, people. Good job at using it. I like the aspect that they use that there uh, because she she even says it's like I know why he did it, it was because she it, it, like Charlotte's her, her uh, his daughter and everything in that sense. But they had that big falling out, so you have the aspect of that continuity being thrown in there as well and I like it when they put continuity into the storylines uh, and saying it's like yeah you did do that then I got why you did it then but I still have a lot of respect for you uh, to go along with it so good touch of uh, putting the uh, putting the continuity into that one to go along with it so Charlotte is out there wanting to apologize to Rick uh, to her dad and she's getting emotional and everything and she like even calls herself a bitch of a daughter and everything in that sense shows the video package from um from months ago and said and like calls out rick flair and eventually it's like uh, it like the end was just like i'm sorry and they go to hug they have a hug and it's like oh they're gonna go for one more hug and then charlotte just slaps the crap out of rick uh, going full heel again, obviously, which is what you would have uh, probably would have expected. And again, Sasha comes out to try to uh, to uh, basically, I guess, help Ric Flair in that sense because you know they're not going to have a man go after a woman in the sense of attacking them uh, to go along with it. Um, so, but Charlotte meets her at the meets her at the pass and basically just beats the crap out of Sasha Banks leaving her lying and then just leaves Sasha lying at the feet of Ric Flair with a very creepy line to go along with it if you consider how what Ric Flair is out like how Rick has been somewhat portrayed outside of the uh, squared circle it's like there's your trophy a little creepy a little creepy on that side of everything uh, but uh, but you know overall actually very good scene there is like the aspect of you know charlotte got or uh, sasha got endorsed by rick flair last week so charlotte was really pissed off at that aspect and it's like there's the person you endorsed right there at the end uh lying at your feet beaten down 
and there you go. <laughs> Good stuff. Charlotte is probably one of the better heels right now on either show. Uh, actually, she's one of the few true heels. One of the few true heels left in the company at this point in time. Uh, like Kevin Owens to a point that you know you know he's a heel, but you kind of still cheer him. Jericho's the same way, and a bunch of the other heels are the exact same way. Like even AJ's a little bit like that. But like people like Miz and Charlotte, they play the heel character to the point that you want to not like them. You want to boo them in some way, shape, or form. And what can you say? That's a good thing. Uh, one of the few true heels left. Charlotte's one of the best ones in the business of being uh, playing the heel. So, uh, good stuff there. Uh, good stuff to end the show as well. Uh, with that being said, that's my review this week for Monday Night Raw. Overall, it's a mixed bag. Like I said, the whole Enzo, cat ass Rusev, Lana thing, you knew where it was going. It was executed well, but like, uh, wait a minute, how many more segments of this do we have to have? before they get to the aspect that Enzo's going to get that crap beat out of him. You know where this is going. That's what happens when you probably watch too much TV dramas as well. You, you just know where that's going in that sense with it. But good stuff from, um, good stuff from Charlotte and uh, Sasha and Ric Flair there. Uh, I like the stuff between Kevin Owens, Roman, uh, Roman Reigns, Seth Rollins, and Chris Jericho tonight. They did some good stuff along with everything so overall not a bad show this week uh not the greatest show either because like i said some of these segments kind of dragged a little bit here and there to go along with it but uh with that being said that is my review this week for monday night raw i thank you guys for watching and i hope you have a great day